What's up, everybody? We hey. are back for another episode of the Wave episode we two. Back. We're calling it. Yeah, we're gonna call I it episode am two. Chris Platty, hundred, yeah, the host <laughs> of Strictly <laughs> Hip Hop and Strictly Hoop Talk, and also the Woodward Heavyweights live every day on Woodward Sports Monday through Friday. But today I am with my guys Nate and Joe what of up, Imperial though? Media up, TV. Guys? I love this stream, man. I love this stream because this is the one where I get to talk music. I talk Detroit sports, and I am draft. I am NFL drafted out. Like that's yeah. all we talked about for this whole entire week. I got a I got a Pistons take. I've been dying to hold in. I'm gonna be able to get off on this pod because it relates. <laughs> so why are, why did the Lions draft a running back in the first round? <laughs> hey hey, I'm not mad at it. That dude is sweet. That dude is sweet. Uh. You know, but reaching let's, a, let's not get into a line back, uh, a running back in the first round is kind of crazy, but we're not we're not trying to do all that. I talked enough about that shit, Joe. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> I'm trying to talk I, some music. So <laughs> he was like, "You about to give me started? Yeah, bro, this like, shit, bro. My brain, my brain just goes to autopilot. I'm like, when you look at the other drafts and the uh, running backs in the draft, I'm not trying to do all that. But we are here to talk music. Uh, we're gonna go through the new ESPN. The new releases. We got uh, we got an album from Jack Harlow. That's the biggest release, but I will just kind of highlight everything so that people kind of can, you know, if, if whatever floats your boat, you can you can get into. Right. Mike Dean, executive produced album by the weekend, titled Four Twenty Three, did not come out. It was supposed to come out. It's dropping tonight. Did not. Okay, they're yeah. probably just fixing the mix, uh, finalizing the mixing and all that. Yeah. Lupe dropped a single. G Herbo dropped, I believe, an album. Conway dropped a single. Uh, Miguel dropped a single. T Grizzly and Skilla Baby dropped an album. Uh, what else we got here? Rico Nasty. Rico Nasty dropped. So it was a pretty light week, but that those are some of the main ones for everyone if they want to get into whatever they want to get into. The one we'll talk about is Jack Harlow, and then we'll kind of get into the new stuff of the week. Uh, let's start with Jack Harlow, man. I know that uh, it was announced on Wednesday. Right. And in my head, I go, Jack Harlow announcing an album in two days with no promo, no press run. That tells me one thing and one thing only, that this is going to be a rap album. This is going to be a response album Mm -hmm. to his album that was commercially successful, but not quite critically acclaimed. Uh, I'm blanking on the title, Come Home, the Kids Miss You. Right. So that's off. I knew that that's what we were getting. I knew that's what we were getting because look at the history of white rappers. We've gotten this before. Mm -hmm. Eminem did Kamikaze. Mm -hmm. This is Jack Harlow's Kamikaze. Now, he didn't openly address it as much as Eminem did on his album where it can't be, Joe. I mean, Chris, it can't be. Listen, bro. It can't be. He even threw shots at Eminem on this. He said, I'm the best white rapper, uh, even 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 better than the rapper that does Mom's Spaghetti or some shit like that. Yeah, mm. uh, that's what he said. Yeah. So I just look at this. He didn't directly say it, but the actions tell me this was a response album. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Like, I don't think it was I don't think it was great. I don't think it was uh, the rap album that we all thought. Not we all, but there were people that thought that Jack Harlow could rap at an, a very elite level. Right. And I think he rapped very well on this project, but I don't think he rapped to an elite level. Mm. Uh, I think he, I think he did, he did an okay job. It was I enjoyed the personal records where he got into some new stuff, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't know what the fuck is is going on. So Chris, on I forgot Joe. to tell you, I wanted to uh, introduce a special guest to you. We actually have. Uh, Jack Harlow <laughs> is here in the studio What's with up us guys? today. I'm from Kentucky. What's <laughs> up, guys? I have a KFC meal. What's up, guys? I am Jack Harlow. <laughs> if uh, the music industry didn't uh, pick him up and plant him into the mainstream. Uh, <laughs> I'm fucking dead, dog. If, oh uh, if, <laughs> if Cole Bennett didn't go to fucking Kentucky and pluck his ass out of the fucking subdivision, I'm Jack Harlow. This album was trash. Let's be honest. This I can't say trash. No. I'm not going to call it trash. I'm not going to call first, it trash. First note. Subdivision rap. Subdivision rap. He, <laughs> did, say, he did say that. Subdivision yeah. rap. Hey, hold on. I, I thought Common Ground who, was dope. That's who this album is for i don't have i have personally he attacked that he attacked those people in the intro common ground which i thought was i thought was fire from a white he definitely white did he definitely I'd say did of the white rappers i think 
because uh, he's so clearly trying to escape it. Mm. And this is why Matt, uh, Mac Miller is so dope because Mac Miller is really the only one that has truly totally escaped the white rapper mold. Mm. Uh, but Jack Hall was trying to escape it with this album. And I thought on Common Ground, he was kind of he was kind of dope about it. Like he, he gave a, a, an honest perspective and I thought it was I, I thought it was dope. Um, so I, I enjoyed that record. And then there were a couple other records, like some of the more personal shit. And outside of that, it was it was. I can't say it was a bad album by any. It means. wasn't bad by any means, uh, Joe. It I was gonna. Be, it won't be elite. It won't be. A it's favorite. definitely not gonna be a hell no. I was gonna ask you to uh, run the first verse of a track for me, if you don't mind. Oh yeah, uh, that verse. Yeah. Oh, which verse? Oh, I know what he's. He's gonna get messy. I know. I I had a feeling this. Is where <laughs> going. Let's see. Let's see if I'm right. Just uh, go ahead and run that. Are you hearing it? Yep, I knew this. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this is exactly where it was going. Yo, what the fuck is this song, bro? What is this song? This is one of my favorites. I can't lie. It is one of my favorites only because it caught me by surprise. I was like, yo, what the fuck is this? I mean, it's a very it's a very real message. I fuck, I fuck yeah. with it. Like, he's not... He's not standing by these people, but he's basically talking about people in his inner circle or people that maybe he was cool with at one point in time. And that yeah, being this fucking so for person. everybody that's watching that don't that doesn't know what we're talking about, we're talking about uh, Jack Harlow's new album, the name of the song that we just played, or the intro to that we just played. The gang, 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 gang. Yeah. To catch a predator should be the title. <laughs> to catch a predator. Yeah, no, it's it's nasty. It gets into two people that he was associated with at one point in time. One one ended up being accused and having several cases of rape, and then the other a child molester. And crazy like, wild behavior be going on in Kentucky, bro. Yeah, I think I I, I don't I don't like uh, I knew I knew that's where you were gonna to say go it with best. It, I feel like it's uh, just don't I'm be shit to do. One, one, Jack, sec. Jack, defend yourself. What do you have to say well, for yourself, to, Jack? Well, to say what you said uh, uh, best, wild things come out of Kentucky. <laughs> uh, y'all sell, y'all let uh, Jack Carlo sell you chicken. So uh, that's kind of crazy. I mean, kind of crazy. But anyways, nah. Uh, this, this is like this is all Drake's fault. This is all Drake's fault. You know, I have I, it in my notes. This I, is the album that we want. Notes? This is the album we want from Drake. Everybody's wanted. I'm not talking A side of Scorpion. No, no, wait. Everybody wants the album where Drake just raps and doesn't sing. Right. Wait. Jack Harlow's existence is all Drake's fault, is what I'm saying. I can't, bro, Joe. I can't uh. I can't go there, bro. Like I don't hate I don't hate him like that. I think he's I think he's I don't got, have any issues. He's got with his weaknesses. Uh, and he's got his music that he makes. It's not my bag, but at the end of the day, he's far from the worst rapper. It is. It is Drake, though. Oh, it is. It's a hundred percent Drake. Drake is. He said it for years. He said it. I mean, I followed. I followed this dude way, way back in like 2016. I had first. I had first been put on to him, and I thought, okay, this kid is dope. He's got some. He's got some interesting stuff to him. But at the end of the day, I, I look at what he's become and like right. he's been honest, like he's always said that Drake is his goat. So who did you think he was going to be influenced by? Emulate. Yeah. I'm I'm not and saying emulate. that him idolizing Drake is a bad thing. I'm just saying his rise as an artist is solely based on Drake and his sound and everything, which, yeah. as you guys know. I can't stand. So <laughs> That's fair. I don't I can't say I like it's very few and far like that weekend and Drake song, that was pretty fire. Drake was rapping his ass off in it though. Yeah. Drake doesn't rap his ass off very often. He it mixes he does like eight bars of uh rapping his ass off, then talks about it's like a melody. Yeah, but not just a melody. A melody about like his his relationship with like some random female yeah. and tries to make it like relatable. Right. I wrote in my notes too. 
uh, to take this take further, going back to the Eminem kamikaze thing, I started thinking about like the white rapper vein that he's trying to get out of. Uh-huh. I was like, I thought of Macklemore's Grammy letter. I was like, ah, it's not quite that, but in a way, he's kind of again. He won't ever admit would, it, but uh, he is he is a little bit apologizing for his last album. Not maybe not apologizing, but more so trying to appease the people that he disappointed with that last album. I Don't wouldn't, I I wouldn't even I wouldn't even put Malcolm Moore in that conversation. Another that was a fluke. Another so. comparison. Yeah, yeah. Doja he's, Cat. he's much better than uh, I, I would say Doja Cat's a pretty good comparison. Just cause like Oh, Doja's she's so doing, talented. She's doing well, the talent things. Uh your idea, but uh, <laughs> I'm saying doing you don't a think rap she's talented? No, no, I oh. I agree. Doja Cat's talented. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying Jack Harlow. <laughs> He's talking about Jack Harlow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought you were trying to say no. There's Doja a difference. Cat, my fault. Uh, uh, no, Doja Cat's putting out a rap album instead of like a pop album this yeah. time around to yeah. appease that yeah. side of her fans. Yeah. I uh I also had in my notes. This is probably the one it's kind of closest to. Is like the Eminem Kamikaze. And then also kind of what Russ did with that Trump EP. I don't know if y'all remember that, where he just had these verses that you could tell that he wrote months ago, and he was just like, I'm just going to throw a whole bunch of rappers on this shit, and I'm going to prove to everybody that I'm just going to rap, and I can rap just as good as anybody. And he did that very well. Uh, that that actually turned me from a Russ hater to a, I won't say Russ fan, but... Uh, Russ I, sympathizer? I respect, Russ his, sympathizer. I, I respect <laughs> his rapping ability. I still don't care for his commercial shit, but I... I respect his rapping ability. I can't tell Jack you a Harlow, single Jack Harlow didn't no quite take it to that level with this with this project, but it was it was mm. cool. It was twenty four minutes, twelve tracks. Like I'm not, you listen to it and I, you know, can that's I it. be serious for a minute though? Yeah, get your hate off. Well, it's 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 really just refining what I said as Jack Harlow. Uh, yeah, like it's just a, it's too simple. It's too. I felt that at times. It's it's a very simple album, and it definitely was very simple, and not in a like not in a less is more yeah type yeah. of way either. So which I think Drake does much better than Jack. Yeah, and that's where I draw the comparison from. Oh yeah, because the beats like the beats I, were I love cool. The intro beat, yeah, the, the beats intro were beat cool. was fire, bro. Shout out to Angel uh, who produced that one. Uh, that was that was fire. That was a fire beat. Yeah. The beats were cool. It's just like having no personality as your personality mm. in your music <laughs> is really what it is yeah. for me. That's why my my boy. I that's, won't, that's I, won't, I won't out Drake's who my boy too. is. I won't out who my boy is. But I would just I would just set this podcast to the roof. I have a group chat with a couple of rap friends, and my boy just came from the fences with with a take. Okay, you want to hear it? Yeah. He said, after listening to this project, he said, Jack Harlow is a better conscious rapper than J. Cole. Okay. He's swaying for the Off fence. the top rope. Bro, yeah. yeah. He said, he said Jack Harlow's uh, uh, perspective on rap is more interesting. Like, it's it's the white... It, it, it's so the the white that person who's who the, who's who the cares about Jack Harlow's perspective on rap music. Let's just put that out there. I don't give two shits. I I don't yeah. I don't want to live in it, but I want to mm. I want to dabble in it as a white person that's in hip hop. Like I do I do appreciate that there is that space for for white people that are, you know, maybe not comfortable in the culture, or maybe just don't so understand it. Like it can be it can be a gateway, but I, it's, the, it's it's just the gateway. Like it, to me, it's not. It's not where you hold your all your value. Like that's not. I'm where gonna I'm gonna give uh, all you aspiring Caucasian rappers a gem. Okay, let's do this. Remember, you are a guest in this community. Fact. Your opinion does not matter. Your thoughts do not matter. We do not give two shits about whatever the fuck you got to say for real on anything. Because, again, you are a guest. You are welcome. You don't get to dictate shit. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, you, if you show love and appreciation, and, I'm, and That's I'd like it. to think That's I'm all a I'm testament, here for. Yeah. if you show love and appreciation to the culture, then you are greeted with open arms and respect and embrace. But it is your... It is not... You are not that's, the controller. That's a, that's you are a not wild the gatekeeper. Take. Yeah. Nah, that's a wild take. Hell no. Nah. 
That's I crazy. mean, he kind of, he kind of, he kind of articulated I'm sure, I'm, it in kind of interesting way. I'm, I'm sure he probably does have some sort of very introspective things to say about rap music. Yeah. Don't give two fucks. Fair enough. Doesn't matter. Fair enough. I won't, uh, even yeah. as a J. Cole. It was, it was entertaining in the good shot. Even as that. a J. Cole hater, uh, that That's opinion is wildly yeah. incorrect. I kind of agree. I kind of, I kind of agree. Actually, I very much agree. So. Yeah, I was about to say you. I very, I very <laughs> much you just agree. put that man at number three in the top three rappers of all time. Oh, not all time. I said of, uh, or, or, or just like oh, right now of that generation. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then you gonna, put, you gonna put you gonna put J Cole did it himself. He did the he did the bronze medal. He gave himself the bronze. But what I'm no, saying Cole's is what team. I'm what I'm saying is you can't put Jack Harlow right next to that dude. Yeah. Like it's oh maybe like gosh. forty other people yeah. right in front of that. Dog. 40. Oh, 100, 100. <laughs> 40 <laughs> before you a hit Jack wild Harlow. Bro. Number. <laughs> I'm just saying. That uh, was a reach. Think about your discography. <laughs> do we want to? Do want to? Okay. Well, we're kind of on the on the subject of slander. Like I know y'all got something to say about uh, Cordae and MGK. Well, oh, I have nothing to say about that. Nope. I watched the video. Okay. Let's but, uh, let's actually bring the video up. Yeah. Then. If we, you you want to do a live reaction, because I didn't see that shit. My only takeaway from this, I'll, I'll give after after we play a little bit of the video. Go ahead and run that shit. Cause I I I got one take and it has nothing to do <laughs> with Corday or MGK. The Doja Freestyle. Yeah, All right. That's the name of it. The name of it is Doja Freestyle. And I guess yeah. MGK is like hosting people at his crib type shit. That's what he says in the intro. Yo, what is Corday doing, bro? Chilling with MGK. <laughs> Why? That's big homie. <laughs> Yo, if MGK is your big homie. <laughs> Yo, OG. What's going on? Full screen it, Joe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's understanding well, they're rapping. I don't think that works. I got it. That's fine. Window. Uh, Just theater mode, then. Yeah. Yeah. Get that bad out of there. So, how how do you feel about it, Chris? I can't. Is the volume up? Turn volume up. I, uh. No, you can't hear it. Yeah, you can't uh, hear it. Probably, uh, probably monetization stuff and all that. Um. I, I, my one takeaway, my first takeaway was they both started it with, I forget MGK. Some was like, what is I'm an alien. Uh -huh. And, uh, Corday said, how can I be misogynistic? I love all my bitches. And that just made me think, bro, Central C really, really killed it with this. Like, this is an iconic song. It's so like, that's how you know a song is iconic when, Everybody does the remix, and they can't start it with anything other than a variation of the first bar of the song. Yeah. Like, hey, how can I be homophobic? My bitch is gay. Like, that, when he did that, now everybody that remixes that song starts with some type of variation of that and then goes into it. That's how you know you just, you absolutely killed it. There's no better pocket. There's no better opening line. You killed it. And that's what. Shout out Central C, man. Yeah. My Central C is actually really dope. The only and, yeah, his is. LA Leakers freestyle was cold. The only comment I had is, uh, man, it must be rough for Corday if he's uh, pairing up with uh, MGK. Well, listen, I can't call all, it rough because you I know can't, I can't know because it, we all are not fans of MGK. Yeah. But yeah, he has a pretty didn't big he, slice yeah. Of he the just, pie. yeah, didn't he just win like a Live cool Grammy Grammy for like best rock album or something? Or I like think that? he was nominated. My boy, uh, he was or. for sure nominated. I don't know if he won, uh -huh. uh, but my boy at, at, at my network, one of one of my homies, he like he died to the death, like he fought it to the death. That uh, MGK is more relevant than Kendrick, and I was like, wow, I strongly hold disagree. on, cap. And actually, you know what? Everybody if you disagree are, with them, but uh -huh. it's one argument proved to be right. He cert he, like MGK is more go uh, gets more Google searches than Kendrick. That's crazy. Which is wild. Yeah. Because we're gonna get to we're gonna mention Kendrick in the closer real quick, but Kendrick is is clearly that boy. And so like for you to have like anywhere near that level of, of reach mm. is insane. But if you are not our a, thing, uh, not any of us our thing. I'm never checking for an MGK project. Hell, I was, that that's clear. what I was about to say. I was like if you are a individual that is currently watching this and you feel like there is a MGK song that I just like is a LaCroix of rap. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. If you think that there is an MGK song that I should be listening to, if there is a single MGK oh. song, let me know. 
I need to know. The that. Eminem diss track. No. <laughs> I no, I'm not listening to no. No, no. There no are people Emin- that there are people that I've I, heard. I, I've I heard those. Stand, no, I don't care. I about cannot those. stand no. that there are people living, breathing, walking this earth that really think that MGK got Eminem. I really can't like those people. And you exist, know me. I'm not yeah. caping for Eminem, but there ain't no fucking way on this God's green earth that MGK got Eminem Never. at all. Never. At all, but anyways, we're getting way too off track. Let's talk well, about uh, let's talk about the YS, YSL case. Uh, before we get off new music, uh, I wanted to talk about the T Grizzly, Tiz. Oh yes, T Grizzly, yeah, Skilla Baby yeah. album. Uh, I know Nate listened to some of it. I listened to all of it. Uh, shit's hard, like. It it has like yes, yeah, so it's hard. If 80, you were, eighty to ninety percent just slappers on there. Yeah, so. if you were if you were here during the I guess I'm gonna call it pre-show during the starting soon screen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You heard it side. What piece. I heard, I liked. I yeah. I'm gonna spin it. I'm gonna spin it tonight. No no bullshit. I mm. just didn't. I wasn't able to get to it between my shows. Relatable con- relatable content, but you know. yeah, like uh, I wrote some uh, tracks down. Like s- really started off uh, for. Me at Icewood, uh, Steppers, uh, Drop the Low was hard, Gorgeous was hard, Side Piece was hard. Like, the the shit they were ta- saying on Side Piece was insane. Side Piece was crazy. Like, uh, I will I've give you that. iPhone, iPhone, fit, iPhone 14. iPhone 14 with the cracked screen. And the sticker. <laughs> is that the song the title? The back. Yeah, side pieces. Side pieces yeah. is the name of the song. It's yeah. about them both yeah. fucking the same bitch. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, I got that one. Uh, Snoop Dogg also has a dope song called Side Piece. Mm. Uh, you're saying iPhone 14 with a crack screen is a song title? No, no. <laughs> that's oh. a, it's a bar. In oh, <laughs> yeah. It's a bar. I was going to say, that's a hell of a song title. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, it's that's a bar. It's a hell a of a song title. <laughs> it's a bar in the song. That's a Detroit rap song title. If I <laughs> crack iPhone 14. <laughs> also... We got this week's Bar of the Week. Oh, okay, Ooh. Joe has a Bar of the Week. Oh, yeah. Let's All see. right. I love using Glocks. They got no safety. Dre Bly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I, I love a good Dre Bly reference. Nobody remembers him. Detroit safety for a long ass time. One of my favorite Lions players ever, just because the name on the back of the jersey was so fucking hard. So yeah, that's dope. I love using. I l- forgot it. So <laughs> that's that's, d- that's dope. That's dope. Let's please not go down a, d- a Lions draft rabbit hole. Please, please, God, I'm sick I'll of spare it. You from no, no I'll safety. <laughs> I'll spare you from all fucking uh, God. football. We, no, we got a good secondary. I'm not worried. Yeah, we actually do. I'm really proud of it. But uh, let's go to let's go to Nate. Yeah, I mean, you got you got updates on on two on, on two cases. Where do you want to go to first? Uh, let's start with four two Doug, bro, because I got problems with four two Doug. Me too. Four two Doug, bro. First, break it down. Like what happened? Break it down. What happened? We're gonna be here all night trying to break. No, it down okay, not happened. like the whole thing. But oh, like just like the so charge. essentially. Four two Doug on the run because he was supposed to turn himself in and he didn't. Uh, the case that he was supposed to turn himself in for, he was only supposed to get six months. Man's went on the run. They caught him. They gave him twelve months. The amount of time that four two Doug was on the run was half of the time that was, he yeah, would have served. I was say, it, was like, <laughs> it was like three months, right? Yeah. Yes, it was half of the time that he would have served, but he spent that. On the run. This Why is, is that? W- this is where you just you just look at somebody, and I don't like to I don't like to judge people uh, and their relationships, but I just look at this, and you don't have the right people around you, bro. You nah. just don't. You just don't like. Come on, for you to don't like. You are an artist that has that has a lot at stake mm. for you and your career, and for a lot of people. You provide for a lot of people. You're. In the op, you cannot afford to lose momentum with how fickle this music industry is. We see it all the time. Right. You know, do six six months is fine. People Bro, go six two months. years without an album. Months. Six months. You got some stuff in the tuck. You can drop that in the middle of your shit. All you had was six months. Yeah. Like, and now you're looking at a year. And now you're looking at a year 
And it's not the end of the world. I think 42 Doug is going to come back all right and all, all of that. But it's just about having the right people around you. Time like, wasted, bro. You Time yeah. wasted. You Time just, wasted. You, you cost it yourself. And, yeah. f- and for what? What did you accomplish in these three months that could justify so, right. an, so extra, an extra nine months? Instead of losing six, you losing 12. Yeah. Like, if you thought if you thought taking six months off was going to hurt your momentum, bro, imagine what 12 is going to do. <laughs> exactly, man. Just surround yourself with the right people. You them got, little, you baby, got them little baby features could not have been worth it that much, bro. Like, come on, bro. You didn't even get any in the last three months. Maybe you did, and it's in the vault and whatever. Who but knows? Like, but all I'm saying is you had six months, bro. Would you, you do an extra six months for a little baby feature? <laughs> if I knew I was going to still be hot when I got out, yeah. I mean, little baby by proximity makes you hot little baby by proximity but is little baby dropping that music a year from now yeah that's that's the difference is well i mean it, it, I is the it's song, song coming out before or after i go in yeah it's, that's the yeah it's it's your, and also it's your i'm not going to prison baby. for six months just for a feature that that's too. that's crazy behavior that's i'm like, not either but if you're going to prison for six months it might as well be for a little baby feature yeah. i'm not i'm not judging you for what you did yeah. to put yourself in that situation i'm just saying hey bro Six months. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't shit. That's a school semester, bro. Like you could have you could have went away in August, came back in January and been cool. Like and then six months, all you had to do is sit in that bitch. You would probably got time served or something. I'm sh- I'm sure you could have talked your way out of that, dog. Like there's no Facts. way. Facts. There's no way. Six months, the government is not gonna they w- I can save six months worth of money by letting this dude out of here. Come on, bro. Yeah. I ain't thinking uh, it through. Uh, I, I don't get it. Why sell? I don't know what happened in that case. Besides the lawyer saying the doctor, uh, the judge was capping. That shit was funny. Uh, that was. I don't know if y'all saw this, but there is a Gunna song in Young Thug's bio I on think Instagram. It's, I think it's a link to Drip, Drip or Drown 3. I think it's a uh, link to the album. Let me let me double check that right now. Yeah. I'll, pull, I'll pull up his Instagram. But what happened? Why are you doing that? What happened with the case? I don't know what happened with the case. I I, I, uh, I, I so stopped paying attention to the uh, case. Young Thug is uh, appealing for uh, what is it? Uh, parole again, uh-huh. fourth time. Uh, don't know if he's gonna get it. I don't think he's gonna get it based on doing it three different times, mm-hmm. and it's it's further into the court case. Uh. That doesn't seem to be going anywhere right now. Uh, Bro, I heard they was having all types of issues, yeah. like, in the the courthouse themselves. Like, they were saying, like, people was causing conflict outside the courthouse. Yeah, bro. Uh, he removed it. It he was a, it. it was a link to, uh, it was a link to Trip or Drown 3 by yeah. Gunna. Um, people, people wanted to jump to that conclusion of, you know, does this mean Gunna didn't snitch? Nah, bro, that's a label thing. The fuck you think he, you think Young Thug has control over his own Instagram right now? He's in jail. Also, <laughs> al- also, also, I don't want to be that guy, but uh, is that, is he trying to just fund the case? Like, probably it could I mean, also be a thing. He, is, he he is using public defenders, yeah, uh, which is often yeah. because they freeze funds and they don't mm. allow the artists to use their. Yeah. Money. To Why? N- well, wasn't that a big right. thing that a couple weeks ago, like a, a bunch of his uh, staff quit because they just like they thought he couldn't afford the lawyers that he had. Yeah, that was that was a report. Um, yeah, but I I I don't know. Uh, I don't know what this means. I don't think it it's saying gonna did it or didn't snitch. If your old man snitched on you, you're not putting that. Would you still pr- would you still promote him? Is that still your man's? No, because I got a little baby to promote. Makes me more money, anyways. Promotion. Well, no, actually, no. He doesn't got no ties or to a baby. He got no ties. Yeah. Is it a finger? Actually, point? his cover, his cover right now is a. Uh, you said is it a, a is finger is point? A baby. Yeah. I don't think it's a finger point. Bro. I don't think so. Either. It's no, co- that's it, it's, it's, it's right now. It's a little baby album. It's definitely a. Uh, that's a that's a label situation. Yeah. The label understands that people I was are just feeding conspiracy yeah. theories. Yeah. The label I think, understands I think that's that. that's the label just understanding that, that. People are still going to his page. Yep. People are still trying to see what's going on. And the headline that it would generate, yeah. tagging him, uh, aligning him and Gunna. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that. The marketing machine behind that is still crazy, even though none of y'all is going to make any money. Yeah. That, that stuff is. The la- that's the label trying to recoup. 
They was like, yeah, what about that advance? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Uh, we got it. We got anything else before we, Joe? Your R and B corner. Do we want to do that? We can do that. Do you want to do, do that? Do NBA I playoffs? mean, of course. I'm here for that. W- it. That we can close with of NBA playoffs. Of course, I want to do R and B. Joe's corner. got a new segment, everybody, every week, or is this just semi annually? Just kind uh, of. R and B is one of the most popping. I would. Genres, so I was gonna say. I guess it's whenever could, he finds. Yeah, it. yeah, we could do. We could it's do like you know. It's really whenever, like uh, Nate was about to say, whenever I find a uh, group of R and B albums or just one R and B album that I really want to highlight. Uh, I know that we mostly talk about rap on here, so I really want to highlight that. Bring some uh, new genres to the table. So I love this. I love R and B. Let's yeah. hear it. What you got? Yeah, introduce some. Yeah, some artists. Well, some are uh, well known or just known. Right. Uh, one is uh, Baby Rose. Mm. I don't know if you guys know who that is. Yeah. Uh, dope artist. Uh, very uh, Nina Simone esque mm. or like uh, Amy Winehouse esque. She dropped a new project through and through. Uh, Can you give us a taste? Oh yeah, yeah. I can. Yeah, you, you yeah. Give us a little, I'll give us actually. A little uh, I, I fuck. With, I fuck. Yeah, with just kind of like play, it, play it low in the this. background while you yeah. describe what's going on. Yeah. I'll play the uh, Smino song actually. Oh, okay. Oh, this guy's now in the future. We're now, sold. Yeah. Now you're now interested. On this, <laughs> now on this shit tonight. Of course. Off stream. Spin it. All right. Do you want me to jump to the uh, Smino part or this part? No, no, no. 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 All right. You can just play the song. We're, we're listening to we're listening to Baby Rose. We're not listening to Smino. All, all respect. Right. All respect. So yeah, uh, that's some shit my dad would get down to. Shit's pretty hard. Uh, the whole album has a different vibe on a lot of the different songs. This one specifically is called "Let Me." I won't tell. With Smino, Smino goes hard on this shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's. It's a very small feature, but still very hard. I'll uh, bring that forward for y'all. But yeah, I loved the differences in uh, types of genres that she was pulling from. Mm. Uh, A lot of uh, disco, dance, like very, like I said before, Nina Simone-esque vocals. Uh, I love the... Uh, songs. Let me see. Yeah, this is this is dope. The disco jumps out, but also you can see a little bit of funk too. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah, uh, I like this. A couple songs that I really loved was uh, Nightcap, uh, Love Bomb, uh, Paranoid, and this one. I won't tell. Those are probably the highlights of the album. Definitely check out Baby Rose. Through and through. Cool. I'm checking that out this weekend. It's on the list. And then I have one more that I will pull up for you guys. It's a double feature on Joe's R&B Corner. Flip the page. <laughs> yeah, I'm, got, I got, got I got notes part. today, y'all. Like, I'm I'm about this shit now. Production level is going through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Production <laughs> level is going through the roof. So if I so got a notepad. This is going to be uh, kind of diff- a lot different from Baby Rose. Mm. This is called Exodus, the North Star EP by Yaya Bay. And I'll play the Don't think I've opening heard of Yaya track. Bay. Run it. So, yeah. Uh, I'm by uh, the sound of this, y'all can tell that I'm. Not or just listening to the show uh, previously, I'm not a fan of overly produced r and b. I'm not really not a I'm fan not of overly produced music period. Yeah, yeah, music period. So I'm going I'm not gonna be highlighting the scissors, the labyrinths who just came out. I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck Joe was going through listening to this shit by himself in his room. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciating good music, man. <laughs> 
like we appreciate, honestly, appreciate more than good music. You appreciate something when you, when, you, when this comes up. No, no, it's honestly like that's how it is. Like for me, I just appreciate good music and if a it's fat ass. what and a fat ass. Oh, I I thought I thought you were <laughs> taking I shots. thought you were calling Chris. him a fat ass. <laughs> Ooh, <that was laughs> yeah, I thought we was about to have a no jumper <laughs> moment just now, bro. I thought he was <laughs> about to get up and swing on you, bro. But no, like I I appreciate good music. Said, oh, and what? <laughs> <laughs> almost threw a Lacroix at you. <laughs> oh, please don't. But no, I'd rather get punched. And <laughs> the only reason, side note, real quick, the only reason I'm drinking this shit is because I did not bring a water or any type of drink, and my throat is killing me yeah. from talking football all week. So you can kill drinking me, this. Yeah, man. Yeah. Ugh, but disgusting, disgusting. But yeah, the. Uh, Yaya Bay, uh, Exodus, the I like that. Uh, North Star, great album. Has reggae vibes. Very uh, low key. Uh, I guess sad music. <laughs> I guess by uh, Nate Standard, but <laughs> uh, no, nah, I I fuck with it. Definitely give it a spin. Uh, definitely the highlight tracks are going to be. Uh, when Saturn returns and the title track. Definitely go out and spend that. I'll add it to my stories and everything. I'll do it whenever I have new albums that we don't talk about on the show. Check uh Joe Bumbles on Instagram. Check that out. That's yeah. dope. I like this segment. I really like this segment, Joe. This this is dope. We podding now. We podding now. We are. We taking yeah. this shit to a whole nother level. I'm proud. I'm proud we had of a guys. we had another y'all segment. Y'all did not when I when we started this. Y'all did not want to talk. And now we no, get bro. You. I Joe's don't even. His, I still Joe's don't. I still don't want to be on camera. But that's you know. I feel. It'd I feel be like, like yeah, that I feel sometimes. Like you're, you're the balance that this show needs. I hate being on camera, bro. I hate looking at myself. <laughs> uh, I'm egotistical. I love that shit. Is there? We yeah, have. We didn't. We doing flood watch. I don't think we have a way. You can't capture audio from the desktop. No. No. All right. Okay. So, so we'll do flood watch next week. Yeah. I can play it through the headphones. Play yeah. Play it through the headphones. Okay. Okay. And so, we'll so. get Chris's reaction. So break this down to me. What are we doing for flood watch here? So yeah, you want to intro? Yeah. Uh, so for the people that have been following us for a while, uh, we sporadically do this segment on our page or on our story called Flood Watch where we just like highlight a uh, local artist who, you know, we fuck with, whose music we listen to, who we feel like they trying to, you know, they moving and shaking in the scene for real. They not just like, they try, they really respecting the craft and like taking their shit seriously. So, uh, I'm very serious about my shit. So, when I see another artist that is like putting everything that they have into a product that they're trying to create. Uh, I got to shout that out, especially if you're from the city. Got to shout that out. So today, we are talking about Okir. Okir. I just want to hear Chris. My so live reaction. Yeah, so we're introduced, We're trying to introduce Chris to some music. So Sounds a little Jack Harlowy. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> Let me shut up. I love that Muddy bass line. That bass is one. That crazy, muddy, really. muddy ass bass line. Holy shit. This shit, if I'm listening to this for the first time in the whip, I'm swerving lanes. Like, <laughs> off red, sober or not. Holy shit. But yeah, so, Oak here. Doing like this that. thing. Been doing this thing for a while. We've had him on both of our shows. Yeah. I like that. Uh, some like if I, if I wanted to draw comparisons, like the ad libs especially screamed like the background vocals and ad libs screamed Schoolboy Q a little bit. I like, can see no, that. I can see that. That's yeah. probably 
very accurate. You know what's actually. funny yeah. is is I've been on a schoolboy Q kick recently. Like I Same. don't know why the last two because weeks I'm I've desperate for music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm excited for a schoolboy Q. Like mm-hmm. I've been listening to Oxymoron and Blank Face a lot. Not too much Crash Talk. But oxymoron and blank face. Oxymoron like, for sure. I yeah, oxymoron, oxymoron even more than blank mm-hmm. face. But yeah, I've been on a schoolboy Q kick, and I, I I fuck with that. Anytime you got a muddy ass baseline that you can just turn the fuck up to, mm. and you have so you have some energy, some punch. That had a that had a lot of punch. What was the name? I want to shout out. Right? Yeah, Joe. Can Kurt. you tell the, Can you tell the people what the name of the song is and where they can find Oak here? Oak here, yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, that was charged up. By Oak here and Brose. They're about to drop a new album and a new video, I believe, on Monday. Uh, what day is that? That's the, f- uh, first? the first of yeah, May. The so first of May. Check out that uh, when it comes out. Uh, I, he's been posting it all to his story and it looks fire. Can't wait for new music. He's, he's one of the people that, like Nate said, when we set out to do Imperial, like, we want to highlight artists that are doing it well. And cape, doing put it my big. cape on. I'm putting my cape yeah. on. My homie said, said he didn't know that he didn't know the term cape. I was like, how? Uh, I'm definitely putting my cape on. That sounds like cap. That's what, <laughs> I'm That's what I'm saying. They're like, they're like, you mean like cap? I'm like, no, cape. I'm like, dog, you don't know what it means to cape or something? Because I just dropped actually tomorrow. I'll shout it out. I'm dropping a dropping a, a cape episode. Episode mm-hmm. one of the Cape. I think I talked about this last oh, week. Oh yeah. yeah, you did. With my boy Flannel Sam. I want to get you guys on that because that's that's gonna be dope. But I, uh, I have wild albums that. Oh yeah. We we gotta do separate. Uh, yeah, we do. I'm gonna have to. It's have just a two on one Lucky Fest, and I don't even hate Lucky. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pause. Speaking thank of, you, thank you for the pause. Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't I didn't spin that. He did drop a single, right? He dropped a single. It's an old song, but news. What's the oh news album next month? Yeah. At some point, he was teasing that a couple weeks ago. We yeah. brought it up, so yeah. he's, he's I think it was next like month. five twenty nine or five twenty three or something. That's got know. a date. I don't. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I, it, I haven't seen a date. It, it had a date in the tweet that you yeah, because he was it talking did? about it had a date in the tweet that he's he's talking talking about yeah, I was going to do a deluxe, but fuck it, I'll do a whole other album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's dope. And that, and that is the right way to do it, folks. Yes. Don't give me sixteen tracks and then. Oh month? no, no date. Yeah, so. no date. Yeah, yeah. today's oh, the man, 28th. That shit ain't that's a, <laughs> that shit ain't coming. I said today's the twenty eighth. <laughs> no, I said May. No, but I'm saying today's the twenty eighth. Yeah. I don't know. I'm saying well, at some point that's probably how you mix those two. Oh, no. up. Yeah, I said twenty third and twenty ninth. Oh, whatever. Uh, but anyway, I forgot where I was going with that. Uh, if you, you if are. you got a project, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So looks. if you. Don't give me 16 songs and then three weeks to a month later, give me those same 16 songs with 12 more packed on to the end of them, bro. Just give me another project, dog. For sure. Your 16-track project should not have expanded to a 27-track project. (laughs) That has a whole different feel from the first 16 songs that you just gave me, bro. Just put something else up. Or no. like uh, I'm the with that. three months later, giving you four extra songs like that's I'm not trying to download a whole new album into my discography. And that I hate up. when they get rid of the original. And then that that right, and then get off. rid of the original, especially because cover arts too. I be falling in love with original like cover arts mm. and like I don't yeah. like when you change that shit, bro. And Even then it be holes in the original album and the shit skip around for no ass reason. You making yeah. my life difficult. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like y'all dropping our project. It's like y'all don't understand how streaming works. But (laughs) they understand how streaming works. That's a problem. Yeah, and it's a grand money thing, and it's a grand inconvenience to the rest of us. It is. It is. And I and I can't stand it. You ready to talk some NBA playoffs, and then we'll get out of here. We got. I just want to hear because I know Joe has something to say about the Heat. He has to have something to say about the Heat, bro. He has to. Heat and five. Over over New York. Oh, easy. Oh, oh easy over New York. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. We just beat Giannis. We have the best postseason NBA player of all time. He said this is a damn he love it hard so much that he's a Miami yeah. Heat. He, yeah. he said we. He come on, you Heat and Nation. Jimmy Buckets. You you don't you respect been out the there culture. With Jimmy Butler and they still. <laughs> he won. said I don't respect the co- <laughs> the Heat culture. You don't know about Heat culture. It's real. I just I just he said we the, the Udonis Haslam 
Heat culture, come on. <laughs> to be to be fair though, Jimmy Butler could have took us. I'm a Pistons fan. I don't know. Somebody else. I don't know what this weed he, business. He could have took us to the playoffs, bro. This Jimmy Butler guy is fucking unreal, man. Yeah. Shout out to Jimmy Best Butler. Best postseason impressive. player ever. Best postseason player ever. I can't. Say, I can't say all that. I mean, it's it's. He's got several good series. So Joe, I, I gotta. I gotta. You have lo- literally LeBron, question. who's had, who's been like first in everything, and all of, like longevity has to matter. Um. And like Jimmy Butler, but Jimmy Butler is like the, he's the best player of uh, jumping from regular season to postseason. Yeah, if that's, if yeah. that's what you mean. I yeah. agree with that. I feel like they do a he's good a, a good job at managing him. Yeah, and c- his condition. And he played the most games he ever the played this year during, during, during the, the regular season. He played the most games he ever played this year. Which yeah. so shout out to Jimmy Butler. That bro. was Incredible. that was the Jimmy Butler thing and not mm-hmm. a Heat thing. Well, even still, like yeah. it was a a. a the management of his health and yeah. keeping him in good shape dude so has, he can get to this point. Dude is a dog. Yeah, yeah. he is he a dog. All credit. When I said Bucks were coming back, I did. I, it was no disrespect to Jimmy. It was a disrespect to everybody else around Jimmy. But yeah. You Jimmy failed, Giannis. Carried them. Don't you failed, Giannis. No, I'm just fucking with you. Oh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that press it conference? All on Giannis. I'm not I'm putting not. it all on Giannis. You got to put a mm. lot on the coach. You got to put a lot on the coach, and which that, worries me. Which worries me Which a lot. Which worries that uh, goes into deeply, your Detroit Pistons. Deeply concerned because everything comes back to how does this affect my Detroit Pistons. Yeah. And uh, <sighs> don't fire Bodenhoser. Please don't. He, he, it's not Hired. his fault. It's yeah. all Giannis' fault. It's all Giannis' fault, Milwaukee. It's not Bodenhoser. Do not fire this man. Because if they fire him, they're going to promote Charles Lee, their top assistant, who is the lead candidate for the Pistons job. Yeah. And if he has to choose between coaching Kate Cunningham and coaching Giannis, he's going to coach Giannis. Yeah. Fuck, man. <laughs> I like co- I like Charles Lee. I'm I'm like just getting I I'm just getting I know Kevin Ali is a finalist as well, but like I'm I'm so ready. Uh Charles Lee is the candidate that has jumped out the page to me. There's a lot of good candidates out there, but he's been the one that I really really like and I really look forward to seeing what he can do for the Pistons. I Bring me he may that's he's what I want. he's he already gone. Oh, is yeah. He? You went to I was, I was gonna oh, say so like him and, and when James Harden joins there in the next season, who that's a dynamic duo in the I strip not, club. Yeah, he made Udoka and James Harden. A, that's they a, going crazy. That's Jack and Kobe Those in the strip problems. club. Yeah. They going crazy. Oh my god, Houston, y'all ain't ready. Uh, hey, did y'all did y'all watch that video? That hey, I, I heard y'all? a rumor too. They're trading Jalen. They they want to trade Jalen Green. That's I wouldn't do that. I think uh, that's uh, your Cade <laughs> or your, uh, yeah, your Cade cape uh, show. In the no, 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 no. It, it came from credible sources. That, oh, really? Uh, they're, they're, they're not, like, it's not a for sure thing, but they're looking to acquire a star, and they'll use Jalen Green to get it, which tells me that you think you're getting James Harden this summer because you want to pair him with another veteran star, and Jalen Green is a great starter piece to that. I wouldn't get rid of Jalen Green to say I wouldn't get rid of Jalen Green at all. But No, that's what I'm saying. That's, so not that's, just, yeah. that's just me. But we're, we're getting too Who far. Who cares? Because we're getting Victor I, Webb and Yama. So. I was going to ask you, Chris. Want to bang your mom? How did the Pistons not get Emi Udoka? <laughs> they didn't want him. He wasn't a finalist. He was, he was, they did their first round of interviews before, uh, before Udoka took the, the Rockets job. So for yeah, s- like some reason. I was very surprised that he wasn't like even in consideration. Yeah, I think especially because if people remember before he got the Boston job, he wasn't he was a finalist for this Pistons job before they chose Dwayne Casey. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that uh the personal stuff. I think the personal stuff. And I think that uh, you know, uh, that's got to be it because Amy Yoroka, as that can't as, be it, bro. Pistons had players paralyzing dudes on the court, bro. Like, I don't, yeah, <laughs> but that, that, was a, that was a different regime. Like, you got to look at it this a way. A different regime. It's the, same regime. it's the same regime, bro. It happened in the same from season. A, from a coaching perspective, from a coaching <laughs> perspective, what could you have possibly done to tarnish yourself if you're you don't other than take away the personal thing right he literally got his first coaching job mm-hmm. and in the first year went to the finals so it's got to be the personal stuff that that just turned Troy Weaver Very off true. Frat fraternizing with your uh, co-workers yeah not good on the resume yeah not good on the yeah. resume don't keep that shit off the resume not good on do the what resume I he said do what I do <laughs> <laughs> let me lead by example y'all but uh yeah, let's talk NBA playoffs. Uh, 
the East, we kind of talked about with Milwaukee losing in the first round. Milwaukee was my finals pick. Was it all of our finals picks? No, I picked uh, the Sixers. You, oh, yeah, you did pick Philly. Yeah. Uh, the East is open now. Like, as good as Miami is, like, the, I, I, I just – I feel like it's Boston's to lose. Like, no, Boston is – Boston can barely take out uh, Atlanta. Yeah, that was a struggle. Yeah, but I just feel like they're playing down to competition there. I really do. And I can see that. I, I, I can really see do. that. I don't think I don't think they they punch them in the first quarter of the yeah. series. Like I just yeah. I just feel like Boston's a much better team. They're just kind of I don't know. They're just kind of not there mentally. And maybe that's and maybe that's the coaching staff. And maybe that's going to be a downfall of this team. But I'm not really worried about them at the Sixers because also absolutely not. even if Embiid is healthy, yeah, which Embiid. we don't know. But even if Embiid is healthy, he didn't. He he had moments where he didn't look that good against Brooklyn either, and and they have and Boston has better defense than Brooklyn, mm-hmm. so I I don't know I just like I feel like it's Boston's conference to lose. I feel like it's they Boston's got my man's Al Horford with the lose. clamps. So Al Horford got the fucking clamps, guy. Like, but it's New not, York, New, it's York not Mi- fair. New York Miami will be fun. Yeah, New York Miami will be oh, fun. So that's Boston and Philly will be fun. <laughs> They'll both be fun. We're too young to really. Remember or remember at all rivalry. the Heat Knicks rivalry that is going to set New York ablaze. I'm going to be honest. Like it's if you thought uh Bing Bong guy was popular <laughs> right now, <laughs> just wait. <laughs> Give it two games. Oh I mean, he went Bing Bong guy and didn't go Ice Spice or anybody else. <laughs> he went straight to the Bing Bong. Oh my god, that was great! Uh, who you guys got coming out the West? Golden, Golden State. State, yeah. Golden State, they're yeah. up three two. They got a chance to close it um, yeah. tonight. Right. Yep, tonight at home. I think they will. I could see Golden State, but I, I'm going with Denver. I'm going with Denver. I think I I think that Phoenix was my pick, but Phoenix they just they got like three and a half guys barely. And I think the wear and tear is going to add a lot. The altitude is going to be tough for Phoenix. Although they match up, uh, Denver matches up poorly against them. I just feel like Denver is just going to just going to carve them up, and, and their defense has been trash. So yeah. I, I think I think Denver is going to beat them, and I think Denver can definitely beat Golden State and or LA, whoever they play. Uh, I mean, I'm oh, I can, I can see I'm forgetting I can we're forgetting I can about see the Lakers though. Yeah, we, are you taking are you taking the Lakers over the no, Warriors or are you taking the Warriors? Because still I not have the my finals pick, guys. True. Stick with it. True. But you guys can't because y'all team lost. Let's go. Joe got something right. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, you Damn didn't man. call you didn't call heat upset though, did you? No. Yeah, there you go. I um, was afraid of <laughs> Hey, they there you go. There you go. Look at that, Dan Lebatard. That's your guy. That's your. No, <laughs> let's, that's let's, your guy. Hey, to be honest with that, Lebatard show is like ninety percent people who are afraid that the uh, Heat were gonna lose. And oh yeah, people were actually being like, "Y'all should have just uh, like lost on the play-ins and got the point five shot to get uh Vic- Victor. Victor. Yeah. Hell no. Nah, they crazy about that. Hell no. All right, Chris, hit us with an ad read and All get right. the hell up out of here. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is The Wave, episode two, brought to you here at Executive Studio. Yes, Inc. sir. Here in Royal Oak, Michigan, if you are looking for a podcast space like like here. The one we're in right now. The one we're in right now. Uh, you, you have all the tools and capabilities. Think of how great I sound, how great Nate sounds, how great Joe sounds. That is all because of Executive Studio Inks and the equipment they got here. You've seen the production level up each week. You know what they, you know what they got. And then on top of that, they have also all sorts of events. They've hosted UFC. They did a UFC screening last weekend, which I couldn't attend, but was dope. Yeah. Um, they have their they have their annual free flow Tuesdays and think tank Thursdays annual, um, weekly weekly or weekly. weekly sorry yeah, yeah annually yeah there's um, also a, uh, there's an anime event coming up for all you nerd niggas out there oh that's dope there's a costume competition light refreshments and maybe yeah. some games who knows and there's all sorts of stuff going on here man I'm telling all you time. every time every time I'm here I meet somebody new I meet a photographer I meet a I, I meet a, a, a social media guy. I meet somebody that's into film. I meet somebody that's into business. 
this place just has so much connections. If you're just in the world of making connections, this is a great place. And Executive Studio Inc. is where you need to be. So shout out to Mo and shout out to everybody that makes this uh, that makes this happen. And uh, go do their shout Instagram out Mo and page. Bird. We yep. love Mo and Bird. Mo and Bird. Mo and Bird. Shout them out, and you can check out their Instagram page at Executive Studio Inks, and also you can check them out on their website, which is Executive Studio Inks dot com. We are the Wave. As always, I'm. What's oh, hold on, wait, Joe's. Uh, just for me, redo the last. Uh, do their tags without the S at the end of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the tags are just at Executive Studio Inc. Yeah, Executive Studio Inc. Uh, is the is their tags my mistake? Uh, that and then their website executivestudioinc.com. For the wave, I am Chris Platty. That was a strictly hip hop, strictly hoop talk. Make sure you please go check out my new episode dropping tomorrow on YouTube. Bring out the cape, feature my guy Flannel Sam. I'm also on the Woodward Heavyweights of Woodward Sports every day, Monday through Friday, talking Detroit sports. And Nate and Joe of Imperial Media TV and all that they got going on. All our socials are here. You guys know what's happening. 7.30 every Friday. All new music, new segments, new production, new everything, baby. Let's go. Have a good weekend. Be safe. Be fun. Let's go. Bye, guys.